Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. If you've been watching my YouTube channel for any time at all, you know that I love working in polymer clay. But not too long ago, I discovered a new type of clay that's a lot of fun to use as well, and that's epoxy sculpt. So today I'm going to tell you all about using it. So this is epoxy sculpt clay, and it's a modeling compound that is air dry. It doesn't go in the oven like polymer clay, but it dries on its own. And like many two-part epoxy products, it comes in two parts. This happens to be the white color, but it also comes in other colors if you need it. So a few things about epoxy sculpt. Like I said, it's self-hardening, no need to bake it. It has a putty-like consistency. You have one to three hours to work it. It's very adhesive, like an epoxy. It adheres to ceramics, metal, wood, stone, glass, plastics, foam, fiberglass, and a lot more. So it's a great alternative if you want to make something that you know you want to keep outside. It holds wonderful detail, and it's super hard when it's baked. It's waterproof. It, it's actually, I've seen it, people talking about using it for marine uses, like on boats. Here's a little carrot I made, and you can see, all right, I broke off the, the greens on the top but I am trying really hard, and that is not, nope, nope, nope. If that was polymer, it would at least bend, if not break, but that is not budging. It's really hard. It comes in 12 colors, white, black, brown, orange, yellow, green, blue, red, pink, silver, gray, and bronze, but you can also add colors to it yourself. So it's great because you get sculpting with clay and the adhesive power of epoxy. And in 24 hours, it's cured and it adheres, like I said, to nearly any service, surface. So here's a project that I recently made with the epoxy sculpt. The teapot I got at the Salvation Army for a dollar or two, and then I just added all these other pieces onto it. Because it's white, I had to paint all these pieces, which didn't thrill me. So when I got to doing all the small garden details, I actually added acrylic paint to these, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But this, just to show you an example of what you can do with that. Again, this would be great for sculptures that you want to have outside and are concerned about their durability in the weather. So the way I use epoxy sculpts is I like to work it on a non-stick craft sheet. Although it sticks to many, many things, it will come off of a non-stick craft sheet. And what I have here, this is one I bought in a three pack on Amazon. I'll have a link to it on my blog and actually cut it up into several different sizes and I find these really convenient to use. You're going to want to use gloves when you're working with the epoxy sculpt. It takes a little getting used to. I don't love wearing gloves but it's epoxy glue and if you're going to be working it with your fingers you don't want to harden epoxy in, in your pores. And then you take equal parts of the two parts and you want to be sure to use a different tool for each part. So like here's this one, and then I'm going to use a different popsicle stick, or I could have just used the other end. Just so you don't mix them up and get start hardening something that you don't want to. And then once you have equal parts, I actually set a timer for this. You want to mix it for two minutes, and you definitely want to take the full two minutes to mix it. I wanted to make sure and give a big shout out to one of my newest supporters on Patreon, Jeanette. Thank you so much for your support, Jeanette. It's greatly appreciated. So a few things about epoxy sculpt. Like I said, it comes in different colors, but it is a little bit on the pricey side. So I don't know that I would invest in all the colors. And I don't love painting it. So what I did when I got to all these little garden veggies was I actually colored small portions of the clay with acrylic paint. And a few things I discovered about epoxy sculpt clay. It is a little bit different in consistency than polymer clay. It's not as flexible or as elastic. It takes detail differently, and actually it changes as the working time changes. In under half an hour, it's pretty sticky, and it's at its most adhesive. And then between one and two hours, it's pretty easy to work with, like polymer clay. But two to three hours, you'll feel it getting stiffer, starting to set up, 
and it's at that point it will hold the most detail and you can really get detailed. At 24 hours it is hard, like I showed you, rock hard, cured, and waterproof. But if you want to change the colors, like I was starting to say, what I did was I added a small bits of acrylic paint and that made some interesting changes in the epoxy sculpt. It made it actually a bit more flexible. It also made it a bit more sticky. One thing that you can use that was a great release and really, really helpful when I was making like the thin little leaves for this cauliflower and I was trying to smoosh them on my mat the same way I would polymer clay and it wasn't behaving the same way polymer clay did. I found just a spritz of water on it helped just to act as a release and helped me to be able to have a whole lot more control of it. One thing that's really convenient about epoxy sculpt is that it cleans up with soap and water. So like for example my gloves here, I'll actually go right to the kitchen sink, wash them thoroughly with soap and water, and then be able to use them again. Now if you do a lot of sculpting with this, you may want to have dedicated tools for sculpting with epoxy sculpt. I haven't worked with it a ton and so what I did was I just made sure that all of the tools I used I washed very thoroughly with soap and water before I put them away and that way I knew they were clean because otherwise you saw how rock hard and adhesive this stuff is. It's going to be rock hard and stuck to your pieces. So you can sculpt beads, shapes, you can add little embellishments and this is where I found that it wasn't as elastic as polymer clay because with polymer clay you can get some pretty thin little snakes and with this it just at a certain point it will just tend to break but like I said with the uh, addition of acrylic paint it did get a little bit more elastic for me. Once you're done with it though, you can sand it, drill it, tap it, put it on a lathe, all kinds of things. Water is also a great way of smoothing and uh, removing fingerprints, although if you're using gloves you won't have fingerprints, you'll have wrinkle prints, which is what I have here. Although you can uh, drill it, it definitely does not drill as easily as polymer clay, so keep that in mind that you may need to use more in the way of power tools rather than hand tools that we can get away with with polymer clay. It doesn't chip, it doesn't crack. It, like you saw here, the only things might be adhesion between pieces where I was kind of having a delicate touch when I put these together because they were just so tacky and annoying at that point, I seem to recall. Sometimes you may have to glue a piece after it's dried. So it's a fun product to play with and something to try, you know, as artists we're often interested in discovering different media. So go ahead and have fun. You know, another great use for this is uh, using it to make aquarium things, although well, you can still do that with polymer clay, to make fillers, to repair things. You can actually combine um, like the mold making materials and make molds of broken parts and make replacements for them with this stuff. So there's all kinds of possibilities. It's just a fun, different medium to explore. And just to give you an idea, there are different sizes. This is the one pound set and I purchased it in late 2016 for about $18. You can buy a quarter pound set, so just a little tiny bit if you want to experiment. That'll be 10, around ten fifty. Or if you really want to get into it seriously, you can buy a four pound set and that's $33, which is of course the more economical. I did that entire fairy garden teapot with this one pound set and with as much as you saw in the containers left over. So I hope that you maybe give this a try. If you could think of any other uses for it, feel free to share in the comments. And if you're interested in the supplies I use, click on the little icon in the upper right of the video or the link in the description box to go to my blog post where I'll always have a complete supply list with links to products. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and take a peek at my Patreon page for how you can help support these tutorials if you found them helpful. Happy creating. Bye-bye.